All right, now joining us here on Thursday Night Tailgate is Atlanta Falcons Vice President of Community Relations, Chris Millman. Chris has been with the Falcons since 2007, starting out as a manager in the Community Relations Department, and he has grown in roles and responsibilities over that time, leading to his current role as Vice President. Prior to joining the Falcons, he spent three years in the Community Relations Department for the Jacksonville Jaguars. He's got his degree in public relations from the University of North Florida, and a master's in sports leadership from Duquesne University in my hometown of Pittsburgh. And I'm very excited he is with us tonight here on Thursday Night Tailgate. Hey, Chris, thanks for coming on the show. Hey, happy to do it. So, Chris, before we get into all the great things that you and your team are doing here in the Atlanta community, got to ask you, as a guy from Pittsburgh, how'd you go from North Florida to Duquesne? Well, I, uh, I actually, it's a funny story. Uh, was able to do my, uh, master's degree while I was working full time with the Jaguars. So I was able to do it online and it was in the early days of online degrees. Um, so it's a little bit more sophisticated from what I understand now. Um, but was able to, uh, you know, I was early in my career, was able to go ahead and, and knock that out while I was juggling working full time with the Jaguars. I just felt like, you know, education was something that could never be taken away from me. Uh, you know, obviously jobs can come and go, but education is there with you forever. Uh, so while I was early in my career, my wife was, uh, working on her doctorate in school. So I said, you know, if I'm ever going to do this, now's the time. And so I was, tr- I was able to find a, uh, a, a university that had a, uh, master's program that I was interested in that was offered online. And it was a small, uh, university up there in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Duquesne University. Uh, and, uh, the fun fact of this was, is I was able to actually complete that degree without actually ever stepping foot on the campus there in Pittsburgh. So, um, you know, it was something that I, I, I went out and I got, uh, but never had to go through the Keystone State, uh, one time, uh, while I was working on that. Wow. So I guess that sort of begs the question, if, uh, if the Falcons ever go up to play, uh, the Steelers, are you going to go up there just to check it out to see what it looks like? Yeah, we've actually been up there a couple times, uh, since I've, since I've been here and, and have been, been able to go up there and, uh, great place to visit, uh, all of, all of that. Um, you know, it's just the way it was working out when I was young in my career. Uh, you know, didn't have a lot of discretionary income, but wanted to do the, the online degree and get that done. And, and, uh, anyway, so I have, I, yes, I have been to Pittsburgh since. That's great. Uh, let's switch gears a little bit. And Chris, we've got a lot of listeners who are veterans and we want to continue to thank them for their service and the sacrifice, you know, they've made for our country and to protect all of us. And, and you guys have a lot of events lined up for this loot to service week. Talk about the things you have planned. Yeah. So we just finished actually about uh, last week. We, so I'll give you actually the, the, the history on it. About four years ago, we decided as an organization, that we wanted to do salute to service stuff better than anybody. It was getting to the point where, you know, the NFL uh, had, you know, basically adopted salute to service as a league wide initiative and every NFL team was going to have their own salute to service game and whatnot, which is great. And really, really cool. From our organization's perspective, we wanted to do something that was going to be completely authentic, completely real, completely make us stand out among the rest of the other 31 NFL teams. Uh, so what we decided to do was develop a salute to service week. So during the month of November, uh, we have one week where every single day we're doing some type of different community outreach activity that gives back to either active duty or, or uh, military veterans. Um, and these are different outreach activities that involve our current players, our alumni, our cheerleaders, our mascot, uh, or some of our associates that work in our businesses. And the whole week is just geared around giving back to the community, uh, as far as, uh, military is concerned. So it's been extremely successful since we've developed it. Um, uh, we actually had one of our, our corporate partners, Zaxby's, uh, which is a big, uh, chicken finger establishment down here in the Southeast, uh, who has a really strong passion for giving back to the military as well. And they heard about this week that we were doing and they wanted to come in and join us and, and, and have joined in our efforts here for the last three years. So, uh, yeah, we, we had a number of activities that we did a, a couple of weeks ago that were all uh, extremely successful. 
And Chris, to that point, you talk about all the different activities you guys have been involved with. Talk about the things you're doing to help support the homeless veterans here in Atlanta. Yeah, so uh, we've done a number of different things on that front. I think one in particular uh, is we've worked with closely with a, an organization called the Veterans Empowerment Organization, which uh, helps homeless veterans uh, on the west side of Atlanta. It's an organization that is probably about two miles from uh, Mercedes-Benz Stadium. And, you know, they're, they're an organization that got an extremely dedicated leader in terms of finding ways to give back to homeless veterans. So one of our activities we did recently, and this was actually during Salute to Service Week, is uh, our associates and, uh, and a number of our celebrities and whatnot attached with our organization, we, we put together care packages for these veterans um, that had all of the essentials, you know, along with some Atlanta Falcons gear and that, that kind of thing, and basically had these surprise delivered to this organization. Um, also, our, our Arthur M. Blank Family Foundation, uh, which is spearheaded by our owner, Arthur Blank, uh, has also given a few grants to this uh, particular organization. Uh, we hosted a practice back in training camp in August uh, at Mercedes-Benz Stadium, where we charged a $5 uh, admission rate for our fans to come and watch. And all of those proceeds went to the VEO the Veterans Empowerment Organization. Um, and we were actually able to donate over $250,000 because of that event to there. So we've done a number of different things to, to help and support them. And Chris, you guys also did a pretty cool event called uh, Battle of the Bases. Talk about what that is. Yeah, so as part of Salute to Service Week, we hosted a flag football tournament among uh, several military base installations uh, within our state. And we had some of our Atlanta Falcons players who came in and served as the coaches for the various teams. Uh, we also had one of our alumni players that was involved as a coach as well. Um, our owner, Arthur Blank, attended. Our head coach, Dan Quinn, attended. And it was just a, a, a way for these men and women to get together and have some camaraderie, compete against each other in what we think is the greatest sport in the world. We hosted it up at our, our Falcons training facility up in Flowery Branch. Um, and it was just a really cool competitive environment uh, in which we had uh, just a ton of fun uh, watching those guys compete against one another. And Chris, last month, the team visited Luke Air Force Base out in Arizona when they were there to play the Cardinals. Talk about what the team did there. Yeah, so we, uh, our head coach, uh, Coach Quinn, each year, when we have a situation with our schedule, where our team may have two back-to-back -back games that are in the mountain time zone or the Pacific time zone or whatnot. Uh, a lot of times what he does, instead of the team traveling back and forth from the cities to Atlanta and back to the, to another city and back to Atlanta, uh, we've done this a couple of times now where the team will actually go from playing in one city and will travel immediately to the other city and then spend the entire week uh, in that particular city in which the game is going to be in play. So, in this instance, this year, we had a game in Houston, and then the following week, we had a game in Arizona. So Coach Quinn decided, hey, let's have all of our, our entire team go out and spend the week in, in Phoenix. We'll set up shop there for the entire week. We'll practice. We'll train. We'll watch film and whatnot as a team together and really use that as a kind of a team, quote-unquote, bonding experience. Well, with us going out there, our coach – you know, with his deep affection to the military and wanting always to stay connected to them no matter where we are, um, he tasked us with organizing a, an event at Luke Air Force Base there in Arizona uh, with a number of our players uh, where we could go and thank uh, those men and women, those families, and just let them know that we appreciate what they do. So in this instance, you know, again, uh, we don't really care if they're Atlanta Falcons fans or not. Uh, we're fans of them. So it was an opportunity for us to go sign autographs, take pictures, uh, do a tour of the base, get to see some of the uh, military equipment and whatnot that's being used on the base, and, you know, being able to just uh, give back. Chris, the, also, the team also did a Give Back to Atlanta event in conjunction with the NFL-wide Hometown Huddle Initiative. Talk about some of the events you guys participated in there. Yeah, so each year we uh, dedicate a, a day during the season where our entire team uh, will go out and give back to the community all at once. So 
the team will be broken up into 10 to 12 different groups, and each group will go do some type of community outreach activity at a specific location. So this could be anywhere from going to a local elementary school and delivering, uh, whether it be gifts or flowers or whatnot, to teachers to let them know that they're appreciated, to going to some of the different children's hospitals in, uh, in town, uh, to uh, this year we, we actually brought a, a food truck uh, to a local fire station and our, our players and associates serve uh, lunch to the men and women there that were, that were stationed. Um, so it's a lot of different type of, types of activities like that. Um, uh, our event this year was, was held in, in October. And, uh, it's honestly one of the days that we look forward to the most during, uh, during the season. Uh, because it's just, it's just a really, really cool way, uh, for us to show our city how much we appreciate their support. Uh, and it's a day, honestly, that our, our 53 players, uh, really look forward to each year when we have that on the calendar. And Chris, in conjunction with this year being the NFL's 100th anniversary, you guys are involved in the Huddle for 100 event at the North Georgia Food Bank. Talk about that. Yeah. So what we've done is, as we've partnered with, we've actually partnered with all, with a number of food banks uh, in the state of Georgia. Uh, everywhere from the Atlanta Community Food Bank to uh, the the food bank out in Savannah. Uh, to the food bank up in Gainesville, Georgia, the Georgia Mountain Food Bank. And basically what we've done is we've, we've tried to in- encourage our fans to go volunteer, uh, at their local food bank. And, and we made a real big push for this during the month of October this year, uh, because the month of October is typically a time of the year where, uh, our food banks here in our state really struggle with, uh, whether it be no- donations or, or volunteers, uh, just due to uh, the November, December time frame typically being a really popular, uh, time for people thinking about, uh, giving back or people thinking about donating. So we partnered with, uh, these food banks here in our state during that time to, to just really, uh, try to showcase them. And, uh, we've been trying to just direct our fans to go and, and spend some time, whether it's an hour or, or a full day, uh, to help serve, uh, the local hungry, uh, in their particular area. Chris, just a couple more before we let you go. And uh, we had the privilege of interviewing Falcons president and CEO Steve Cannon back in August. He's a, he's a military veteran. He attended West Point, spent several years in the Army. He's the Falcons nominee for the 2019 Salute to Service Award. And to just give everybody some background on what that award is, every year all 32 teams nominate somebody who demonstrates an exemplary commitment to honoring and supporting the military community. And for three straight years now, someone from the Falcons organization has won that award. Dan Quinn won it back in 2016. Andre Roberts won it in 2017. Last year, Ben Garland, who's now with the 49ers, he won it. But Chris, remind our listeners about Steve's service and the initiatives that he's led for our military personnel. Well, Steve is just an unbelievable leader. Um, and the thing that I appreciate about him the most is, you know, he is a, a West Point graduate. Um, but when he says the word salute to service, um, uh, he, he takes it to a whole nother level and a whole other meaning. And he's just a great resource for us as an organization to have because he's, he's, he has served, uh, you know, our nation at the highest level. So we're, we're, at, we're, at, we're able to really, uh, lean on him for his thoughts and direction a lot of times on what are those things that will really make the most impact. And, you know, Steve is, uh, the type of leader too where, uh, he's, he's obviously got a lot of responsibility in his area, but he's also going to make time to, to give back and, and really put his money where his, where his mouth is. And he's going to show up to these, uh, you know, these veterans events. He's gonna get out there and take trips with us to, uh, Iraq and Kuwait when we did a USO tour last summer. Uh, he's gonna join us when our coach wants to take 12 of our players up to West Point so we can do a, a leadership summit with some of the, the greatest leaders that our country has to offer. Uh, Steve's gonna be a part of all that stuff, not because he has to, it's because he wants to. So when you have a leader like that, who wants to lead at the very highest level um, in this particular area and gives us the resources and whatnot to do so. 
uh, it makes our job in terms of putting all this stuff together just a, an unbelievable platform to really make a difference. Well, Chris, this is an amazing amount of stuff that you guys are doing in the community and for our, our military personnel and veterans. Are there other events that you have planned either for the holiday season or the remainder of the NFL season? Yeah, so, Chris, I, I got to share with you uh, something that we've done for the last four years. Uh, and I know all of the servicemen and women who are listening to this show will, will really appreciate this. For the last four years, we've brought Fallen Hero families uh, and worked with an organization called TAPS. Uh, and for those of you that don't know, uh, TAPS is the Tragedy Assistance Program for Survivors, who just do amazing, amazing work to support these families to make sure uh, that there's programs and support for them, um, you know, grieving the loss of, of a loved one who's served our country. Well, the last four years, our organization, led by our head coach, Dan Quinn, has brought 63 families to Atlanta for an entire weekend. And we put these families up in hotel accommodations. We host a, a big welcome dinner on the night that they arrive, Friday. On Saturday, we bring them up to Flowery Branch, uh, where our practice facility is located, so they can meet our entire team. Uh, and then Sunday, uh, they participate in some of our pregame ceremonies, as well as the national anthem, and, and then obviously have them stay for the game. You know, this year... We raised the bar even even more, and we brought 94 TAPS families uh, wow. to Atlanta for the entire weekend uh, from all over the country. Flew them in. These are all different families that we've honored, uh, that we haven't honored before. And it was a way for us to just wrap our arms around them for the, for the weekend and let them know uh, their loved one hasn't been forgotten. A cool thing that we did last year, uh, which was another huge hit this year, is that we actually uh, alerted all of our suite holders in the stadium uh, and let them know that what we were doing this particular weekend encouraged them to host some of these families in their suite for the game. And so, of course, we had an overwhelmingly amount of uh, interest from our suite holders in wanting to host these families. So uh, in this week's past game, uh, all 94 families were in different suites around the stadium for the game, being hosted by a variety of different companies. It's just a way for our suite holders to feel connected to what we were doing from a salute to service standpoint. Quite honestly, I, I couldn't be uh, more proud of this. What our head coach has done, spearheading this for the last four years, has really been unbelievable. This past weekend, and bringing those 94 families here, that was actually the largest gathering of TAPS families ever hosted by a professional sports team. And so for us to be able to lead the charge in doing that, uh, again, thanks to our head coach, Dan Quinn, uh, is just really, really unbelievable. Chris, that's absolutely fantastic. Kudos to you guys for all the fantastic things that you're doing to make a difference and the lives of people in and around the Atlanta community and to our veterans and the homeless. For our listeners who, who want to get involved, want to sh help support the things you're doing, is there a way for them to reach out to the Falcons organization and say, hey, sign me up? Well, here's here's what I would tell you. Um, we always want the, the center of attention to be with some of the organizations that we work with. Uh, our job is we want to lift up uh, some of these partner organizations that we work closely with. So if you're interested in supporting the Falcons and some of the community outreach activities that we do, the best way to do that is to reach out and support some of these organizations that we work with. Uh, you don't need to go through the Falcons to do this, okay? We want you to dive in, both hands, both feet, into some of these close organizations that we, we that we do uh, align ourselves with. So for example, I mentioned earlier that the Veterans Empowerment Organization there on the west side of Atlanta. Oh my gosh, they could use volunteers, monetary donations, whatever, whatever it is, and however it is that you want to get involved. That's a that's the organization. That's a great organization to do it. Uh, I mentioned also the food banks around our state. You know, our food banks are begging for donations. They are begging for volunteers. Great great ways for you to give back to the community. And then lastly, we mentioned in TAPS. I mean, 
you know, when I first heard about TAPS and, and the programs that they do for their survivors, every time I'm around them, all I want to do is find more ways to help and support. Like, how can you not want to help and uplift these with these families with all that they, they've they gone through, all their loved one has gone through? we got to celebrate them. we got to support them. And we got to figure out whatever way that we can to help to make sure that their loved one uh, is not forgotten. Well, I'll tell you what, Chris, I, I couldn't agree with e- everything you just said more. And we will certainly continue to pump out that information. Like I, like we said uh, off the air, this is going to be a part of our spotlight on the positive segment. So we'll talk about those sorts of things and continue to pump that out. For our listeners that uh, want to at least stay up to date with all the great things the Falcons organization is doing here in the Atlanta community and follow those things online or on social media, what's the best way for them to do it? Yeah, so we have a tremendous Twitter account, which is titled Falcon CR, F-A-L-C-O-N-S, the letter C, the letter R. It is really, really uh, updated quite frequently to showcase all the great things we're doing in the community. When we do have different opportunities and whatnot, that, that is on there as well. Um, so I'd highly encourage uh, all of our listeners, Twitter, uh, Instagram, to please give us a follow to stay uh, updated and, and in the know on all the great things that's going on. Well, Chris, I can't thank you enough for taking time out of your night to come back and be here as a part of the show. And uh, we hope you'll come back and keep us updated from time to time on all the great things you're doing, continuing uh, to be a part of our spotlight on the positive segment. We really appreciate you guys and all you're doing. Hey, thank you for what you're doing. And thank you to all the men and women out there. Uh, happy Veterans Day that are that are serving, who have served, who are currently serving. Uh, we appreciate everything. Uh, that you do for our country. Thank you for that, Chris. Take care, my friend. All the best to you and your family and everybody there at the Falcons organization. Looking forward to being a part of the Salute to Service uh, game on Sunday against the Bucks. We'll be there. But thanks for uh, taking your time and, and letting us know about all these great things. And we'll, we'll continue to stay connected. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. Take care, Chris.